right, everyone, you know what time it is. It's training camp time. Oh, we're only a couple days away from training camp. This is the New York Gen Straight Talk online Big Blue Sports training camp preview video. We're having a bad hair day today, so that's why we're wearing the hat, and I have to just laugh and joke about it because I don't even know where the hell I got this hat. I got this hat somewhere because it's a Giants hat because you know it's a New York Giants training camp time starting this Wednesday. Wednesday, Wednesday, Wednesday. We just got to do it. Wednesday, 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 Truckosaurus. You got to have Truckosaurus. Um, going to be at camp this year again. Uh, I think we're going to go Thursday and we're definitely going to be there Sunday. So if you see us, go say hi. We're going to be hanging out with some of the fellas. So make sure you drop in if you see one of us and say, yo, Tim, yo, whoever else, what you guys doing? Want to talk about some positional battles this year because the Giants, for all intensive purposes, and we've talked about this before, are still technically in a rebuild. Yeah, you go nine seven one. You go. You make the playoffs. You you have that big win in Minnesota. But at all intensive purposes, salary cap wise, roster wise, talent wise, you're still in the middle of a rebuild. There are a lot of games that last year that could have swung the other way. I mean, we lose both the games to Washington. We're not in the playoffs. But we don't want to talk about that now because that was last year. This is this year. A lot of stuff going on. And the one thing you have to talk about right off the bat is Saquon Barkley. What's the situation? I don't think he's coming into camp. I think if he does come in, he may miss the first week. He does. He is not going to be fined for missing training camp. The only time that he is going to have a monetary impact is when he starts missing games. He misses, and he's going to lose like a half a million dollars a game. So that is the only time right now that he is going to face any financial wherewithal issues in reference to the Giants. So I don't think he comes into camp, and if he does come into camp at all, probably be in the last week, or maybe he misses the first couple games to show the Giants, hey, listen, it is what it is. Now, the giant running back room, we talked about this on the stream yesterday. Um, you, ha- you got Matt, and like I said, Matt's got about, what, 29 starts? I forget the total of Matt Brady, how many starts he has. But he, he most of his starts came with the 49ers. We know that. We've seen what he can do. Is he going to be that bell cow back? Is he that running back that can be sitting there every day running, you know, carrying the mail? I'm saying no. But that's, you know, why you also went out and got Eric Gray. Uh, I like Eric Gray from a, a – I liked him better when Eric Gray was going to be on this team as maybe a third down back or maybe potentially as a, um, you know, as a fill, as a fill-in guy. If if Saquon is out, he is going to have to be in the rotation. I think the Giants, what they're going to have to do is rotationally sit there and and kind of put all these guys together. Because, you, you know, you, you got Gary Brightwell as well. We don't know. We we have no clue what Gary Brightwell is going to be. We have no clue. And at this point in time, we have still have no clue what Gary Brightwell is going to be. Now, the Giants, of course, went out and picked up James Robinson uh, from – well, he's actually he was he he was with Jacksonville for two years. Went to got traded to the Jets, got cut. Was with a cup of coffee with the with the uh, excuse me with the Pats, and now he hit the free agent market. And now the Giants picked him up, undrafted free agent. He ran for over a thousand yards that first year. That was a very bad Jacksonville team, um, but he had a good season. Next year, they went out and drafted Trevor Lawrence, excuse me, Trevor Lawrence and Travis ATM. And the tw- Travis was taken with the 25th pick because they, so the, even Urban Meyer kind of knew that he probably wasn't going to go with, you know, with James Robinson. He is a good downhill runner. I call him a bowling ball back. He's got to get going. He's got to get moving. He, he's, he's got to progress through it. And he's got to, he's got to have that initial burst through the line. Kind of like, you know, he's got to kind of like squirt his way through it. You know, if you go back, if you want to compare him to another Jacksonville back, uh, Maurice Jones drew. That was another guy. He, it was, you know, that little guy, the bowling ball guy that, the, you know, the guy that's kind of low to the ground. He's, he's five ten, So he's not a short back, but he, he's got this bowling ball back mentality, especially at 218 pounds. And that's kind of what it looks like. And that's kind of way he runs. He blew out his Achilles tendon his second year. He had seven, hit 700 yards that second year. And honestly, the initial burst that got him through that got him through the line was not there in 2022. That's why when Travis ATM started playing extremely well, who ran for over a thousand yards, Jacksonville dumped him over to the Jets. And the Jets, of course, had a running back issue at the time. And with the Jets, he only had 29 carries for 85 yards for 2.9 yards carry and only two receptions. Now, this is also a guy that can be a, not really, I'm not going to say a threat out of the backfield. He can catch the ball out of the backfield, but he's not going to give you much yak. He's not going to give you much yards after the catch because that's just the type of back he is. If, 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 if fans think that he is going to come in here and 
replace Saquon Barkley, you're crazy. He had one good season. There have been plenty of good backs in this in this league that had one good year and never rushed for a thousand yards again. Now it's nothing against James Robinson, but he is going to be part, in my mind, of a rotation. And that's what the Giants need to look at. He's going to be a rotational back, and I think it's going to be with Matt Breida. I think it's going to be Eric Gray, and I think it's going to be with James Robinson. That's if Saquon Barkley doesn't show up. So that's going to be an interesting camp battle to watch because we also got a couple other guys in camp that uh, you know may get that will get some playing time now which is going to be interesting because you always want to see those guys get that extra playing time. And there's going to be some guys in camp that, you know, you got Corbin from last year, the holdover from last year, speed guy. Uh, I think he is definitely going to be a holdover. Like I said, I think he is definitely going to have, uh, you know, have a say, we'll say, and what's going to go on here. But it's going to be interesting. One of the other things that we're going to, have to take a look at really carefully at this camp is going to be the linebacking core. Um, you, you, you know, you, you go out and get Bobby O'Kara. Okay, I, I've said it before. We paid, we overpaid a little bit. If you look at the market, we overpaid a little bit for an off the ball linebacker. You look at what TJ Edwards got and such and such and such. Doesn't matter though. He's with the Giants. Is he going to immediately improve the linebacking court? Yes. But you also have a plethora of guys that could have to come in either vis-a-vis injury or coming back from injury or just have been on this roster for an extended period of time. You, you got Darren Beavers, Cam Brown. Uh, you got uh, Troy Brown. You got Carter Coughlin. You got what's his name, the kid Johnson. You got McFadden. You got Bobby. Um, so you're going to have a bunch of guys in camp that you're going to have to see what they can do and how they can fill in, and really how they're going to work with this team and how, because we are, for all the talent that we had up front last year, with Leonard Williams and Dexter Lawrence and everyone else, we we were a sieve on the defensive line, and when they were getting into that second level, we weren't making the stops. We, we just weren't. So now, hopefully, we're going to get a little bit better linebacker play with Bobby. You know, kind of going to be a little bit more of that Blake Martinez. But we have to just wait and see what's going to happen. Because the defensive line is not in flux, but you got a lot of guys on this defensive line that we're going to need to take a look. You got, you got Anderson. you got Butler. you got DJ Davidson who's coming back from the injury. you got Dexter Lawrence. you got Jordan Riley. you got uh, Leonard Williams. you got the Nachos. you got A'shaun Robinson. Uh, what's his name? We got Kobe Smith, and, and there's, so there is a plethora of talent on this line. But again, we're gonna have to find the right three or four guys, technically five guys, if you want to put it in the rotational guys, that are gonna be able to stand up against the run because the Giants were easy to figure out last year. We talked about it: off tackle left, off tackle left, off tackle right, run up the middle, throw it over the top. It was an easy. The Giants, like I said, if you look at Winks, if you look at if you look statistically, last year was his worst year as a defensive coordinator. And that and that's even concluding the 21 the 2021 season with Baltimore. So he's got to figure out this rotation. He's got to figure out how to stop the run. He's got to figure out how to slow down the run. He's got to figure out how to contain the running game. And we're going to hope also that our defensive ends are going to be able to set the edge and hold the edge. You know, because you still have a lot of guys that are quasi defensive ends outside linebackers. You got, of course, Azizo Jalari. You got Smith, who we haven't seen anything yet. So hopefully Smith can stay healthy. You got Kayvon. Kayvon Tip is going to have to take that big step. Uh, you know, you got O'Shane Zimenez coming back. It, it, it's just going, you got, what's his name? You got Ward. It, it's just going to be interesting to see the rotation that the Giants start working with right off the camp and what that first depth chart comes out, what that's going to be. The other interesting positions I want to see is going to be safety. I mean, you got Dane Belton. Dane Belton was supposed to come in. According to some giant fans, Dane Belton was going to come in here and be the starter from day one. He got hurt, and he got benched. He got benched because he didn't play well, and he got benched because he blew a lot of assignments. You know, you picked up uh, Bobby, what's his name, uh, McLean, out of, uh, over from Washington. Um, there's a reason he came in on, a, on basically a veteran minimum contract. He's 5'9", 196 pounds, 29 years old, been in the league for nine years now. He's a professional. Is he going to be that quality guy? I don't know yet. You got Xavier McKinney. He's going to have to step back. He's going to have to step back up even after that ATV accident. You got old Jason Pincock. You got uh, Trenton Thompson. Uh, so you got a lot of guys again that we're going to have to be curious to see who we're going to be those starting two positionally. Now the last thing I want to talk about that we really kind of have to keep our eye on is the offensive line, and it's going to be more of the guard position. And also the right tackle position. You know Evan Neal is going to be there. He's going to be the starter from day one unless something changes. You got Matt from Connecticut. Matt is Matt. If Matt makes the roster, I'm extremely surprised. But it's also going to be the guard positions. Because right now you are in total flux with your guards. 
And you you have what's his name? Jake Anderson. You got Ben Bredesen. You got Wyatt Davis. You got Glowinski. You got Shane Robinson. Picking two guys out of that lot does not fill my heart with joy. And you got some other guys, but we're going to have to find someone excuse me, that's going to step up in those two guard positions as well and make an impact. So like I said, it's going to be interesting. There's going to be a lot going on in this camp. We're going to be out there. We hope you're going to be out there. And again, this is Tim. This is New York Giants Straight Talk, and I'm out of here.